Right, and hello everybody. And I am already laughing and giggling and uh, I'm sure this is just gonna be the beginning of it. Alan, um, if you've already seen him on some interviews, is quite the card and uh, we're, we're already having a laugh. So uh, I'm here today with the amazing Alan Green of Gaia. Um, and if anybody has seen it, and I'm sure lots of you have already, and I ha I watched it with awe, with Shakespeare decoded every single episode, because I watched it when it was still coming on and it wasn't all loaded up. So every week I was waiting for the next episode. So I, I just absolutely loved it and I found it amazing. But um, there is a lot more to, to Alan than that and he has been on this on this journey for many 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 years and I will introduce Alan and say hello Alan say hello to everybody hello everybody <laughs> oh I can talk at last good <laughs> right no she's right you know there is a lot more. So anyway, so you were watching every episode as it came out before the before you could binge them. I didn't realize that. So you were the one. Yes. <laughs> you were the one who was watching all. Bloody hell. <laughs> yes, I, I I was the geek, obviously. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Um, well, well, we have a bit of a story, don't we? Because we we not have really to, we no we, we do. Not <laughs> we have we have to tell everybody how this happened because this, uh, is, this was most unusual well it was for me anyway so oh, it's yeah it's it's one of those it's, yes. it's way, way up there on on your list of unusual events that are quite inexplicable unless you live in in the sort of uh, weird world that melanie lives in <laughs> Yeah, and you don't. I don't. No. <laughs> so, but who's going to tell it? Do you, well, do I, you wanna... I'll tell it because you only know you only know a small amount of it. Oh. So oh. I'll oh. I'll, t I'll tell it. It's my oh. story. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is your story. Yeah. So, what happened was at the end of January um, is my birthday. And my husband, Dale, decided that he was going to book somewhere just for us to go away for a couple of days. I wasn't really bothered where. It was just a break. Um, he decided on where we were going and he booked Stratford. Which I was like, really? So, right, OK, went with it. So we got to Stratford. Uh, never, ever been before even though it's it's about two hours away because we're in Lincolnshire. So we arrive, we book into the hotel and we walk into the town, which is probably about a 20 minute walk. And we get to the cafe where we're going, want some lunch. We get to the cafe and there's a reason why I'm telling you all of this as you will see towards the end. We get to the cafe, um, we get the the actual menus and the light was really bad. So he pulled out his phone to read, to put the light on, on the menu. I went to get mine and realized I'd left it in the car, which you can imagine went down really well with Dale because he's 20 minutes away. He's thinking that the car's gonna get broken into. My phone is sat in the car. So yeah. this time I'm sat there. So he hot foots it back to the car to get my phone. Luckily everything was all right. He comes all the way back again. So the reason I'm telling you this is because there's already that delay. I, I didn't know all this bit. I, <laughs> I, I got the shortened version you when did. it happened. This is interesting. Yeah. So we'd oh, already okay. we'd already had this delay, right? Yeah. So, so okay. therefore we're having lunch. The rest of the day we're wandering around. We end up um on the green where all of the statues are next to obviously the, the theater. And as we're wandering around, Dale's pointing them out. And uh, we obviously had words about uh, the witch. 
<laughs> so uh, and then we're we're talking about all the other characters. And as we're walking back up back over from there into the town, I happen to say to Dale, you know all this is a load of rubbish, don't you? <laughs> too, it's too many went. Yeah. I beg your just, pardon. Just, just, just yeah. say, say what's on yeah. your mind. Yeah. No, don't don't pop it went, up. It's 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 nothing as it seems, you know. And he went, What do you mean? I says, Well, I said, you know that he, you know, he, Shakespeare didn't even exist. And he went, how on earth do you figure that out? I said, well, I've watched a program. And I said, and I've watched it all. And I said, with Alan and all of his research and everything else and explaining it, going into detail. And he's just looking at me totally blankly thinking, as he normally does, this person is plumbing. crazy. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> he should be used to it by now. So... <laughs> So yeah. we carry on walking. We we go to an actual cafe. We get in the cafe. I look at the menu and there's nothing on there that I, I want. And I never do this. And so I actually get up and I said, I'm not staying. So this is another thing. I get up and I'm right, put my coat on and we go. Right. And then Dale has, like I said to you, Dale had been talking about this restaurant all day. And he's, it was incest. It was just ridiculous. Let's find the giggling squid. Let's find the giggling squid. I'm thinking, what is it with this restaurant? So yeah. the next thing we go, he says, oh, he looks on his phone. He says, it's not that far from here. And I'm right. OK, let's go to this flipping restaurant. So we stood outside this restaurant looking at the menu, obviously looking to go there for the evening meal. Yeah. So right. OK, great. So as we stood on that, and it is a junction, and there is, it's, there's four ways you can walk. So I decide to walk, for whatever reason, straight up. And Dale said, where are you going? And I said, I'm up, just up here. And he said, there's nothing up there. I said, oh, I'm just going up here. So I said, carry on walking and then a bit more. And he said, where are you going now? I said, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just going up here. So carry on. It, then he's in front of me and we get to this hotel and he stops and he went, oh, this looks nice. So he's in front of me. He stood looking at the menu. Right. I'm a bit behind him. And as I'm walking towards the entrance of the hotel, this person walks out in front of me, literally just straight in front of me. This person? This person. Who and I, to... I do a double take. And obviously this person... Was you? <laughs> and I just stood right. there, like literally, you you'd park your car directly in front. You got in your car, and yeah. I'm I stood there more or less with my mouth open. And Dale looks over and he goes, "What are you doing?" And I went, yeah. "That was him." And he went, "Who?" I said, "The person that I've just been telling you about, literally ten minutes before." And he went. Okay. Right, okay. And so I'm stood there and he went, knock on the window. And typically English thing. And I went, no, what if it's not him? And he went, well, if it isn't, it isn't then. So obviously I come over, this mad woman knocks on your window. You put the window oh. down and as soon as you speak, because obviously your voice is very distinctive, I'm, I'm like, it is you. <laughs> well, actually I said, hi, ma'am, how are you doing? <laughs> What's going on there? Uh, and 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 she said, "Oh, it's not him. He's got a different accent." <laughs> oh, oh, can I can I take over now and tell yes, you? Yes, go on then. My version of yes. It. So I've just come to England. I get into Heathrow. I get my rental car. I'm not even interested in anything other than getting straight a beeline to Stratford because I'm on a mission. I want to get there right away. So I get on the motorway and it's about an hour and a half, something like that. And I pull into Stratford now and, and it's impossible to park anywhere in Stratford and probably the same all over England now. I don't know really, but it, particularly there, they've got the yellow jacket police watching everything and any parking space that is even available is still only restricted to two hours. You've got to park your car there, go and get a, a ticket, put money in the box, get the ticket, put the ticket on display on your windscreen. And it's only two hours and you cannot then 
move out and come back because they keep track of you've been there. You cannot do longer than two hours. And that forces you to have to find a, an actual overnight parking space, uh, which is very, very expensive. But that's the whole deal, right? So even though I drive straight into Stratford as fast as I possibly can, I hadn't booked into a swank hotel or anything. It was just like this little place, this bed and breakfast. It was nice, but it was, you know, it was right there on that on that street that you're talking about where you end up standing. Uh, but I see there's a parking space right there. There's one parking space, only one. And it's right there, right in front of, of the door of this bed and breakfast. So I park there, I go in, I... I take my uh, cases up to my room, and like you do when you sort of first check in, you go, "All right, let me get the, hang my clothes up, wash, wash my face, clean up." But I know I've got to get out again to find an actual long-term parking spot. So maybe half an hour is all I was there, maybe twenty minutes. So I come out and 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 leave that building and go straight to my car, and that's where you just left off. You're standing there, and you will see me. So imagine all the timing that has to happen mm. for that to happen, for that to happen, right? All the the dithering about that you were doing in another place and going here and losing your your phone. So he added another how I'm, I don't know twenty minutes or something. Then he's yes. got to go back. All that timing that's being mm. choreographed by angels, who whoever I don't know. It's being choreographed though, so that we can have this moment of just, and I just, I just come out and I've got to move my car. So in my mind, I got in the car with about, my ticket has still got an hour and a half on it, but I've got to move. I can't just stay there. And I see you staring at me and, and I'm thinking, I don't know that person, but she seems to think she knows me or is she, am I just, what's going on? So in my mind, I thought maybe you wanted the parking space because yeah. it's so precious. So I I remember actually I started to wind the window down, but maybe it's the way you remember it. I, I don't know one way or the other. I was thinking, oh, I'll wind the window down and ask, oh, do you need this parking spot? Because if so, bring your car around and not, hey, you can use the rest of what's on this ticket. That's That was in my mind. Yes. Not. Not that it was going to be uh, you know, <laughs> woo -woo stuff. So, but then, of course, I spoke and you said, oh, it's you. And I went, no, it's not me. I denied it immediately, of course. What do you mean, weird woman? It's me. <laughs> well, you don't know me. <laughs> she says, you're, you're, the, you're the, the guy on the, on Gaia, the Shakespeare guy. And I went, oh, my God. I'm being stalked. No idea I was that famous. Bloody hell. It was just the it was just the most extraordinary thing, wasn't it? And I'm yes. going, what? Mm. Mm. And then you said, we just came here. We've never been to Stratford in our lives, but got up this morning and knew that we had to come here. So again, you know, playing telephone at the party. I thought it was you said you you, you knew you had to go to Stratford. It's Dale. So Dale mm. was the one. So you're, both, so you're both sort of weirdly psychic as well. So he he knew that he had to go to Stratford. He's like being used somehow as a vehicle for for everything that you do. It's, it's, a, it's massive, isn't it? So we talk briefly about, uh, I remember you saying, I do the same sort of stuff that you do. I, I find codes. I'm I'm into codes. I, 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 I do weird mm. I'm trying to get it out as quickly as possible, but luckily, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Luckily, everything was a lot calmer later. <laughs> so, anyway, so that was the start of it, and then I, I just was in. We're both in shock, really. Mm. And then, then you introduce Dale, and he's standing there, and he comes over and we say hi, and then it was obvious that we had to keep, we had to get together. Mm. And he mentioned it's your birthday, so I said, well, let's, we should get together for. Let's get for, together for dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, but I got to go and move my car right now, right? And so we got got your number, and I called that you later. It. And you said, "Oh yeah, well, there's this place called the Giggly Giggly Squid," mm -hmm. which again, there's a whole piece of the puzzle that is in that name itself. I remember you saying, "Yes." I will explain now as we get into the podcast if we can get into it. I mean, unless you <laughs> what you've got to say, <laughs> oh, grief. Yeah. What else is on your mind, Melanie? <laughs> our podcast is is letting. I'm always saying to people in everything that I do, the fact that, like you've just said, 
when you are on this path, magic happens. And it really, really does. I mean, a lot of things have happened to me during my period of since 2012. But that, what happened to me in just us literally crossing in front of each other after yeah. what, that just blew me away. Absolutely blew me away. No, it does uh, because, but again, it's only because we're in tune on a certain level that these things even can happen that you can recognize them and the more you do and the more you're open to that the more quickly they happen and it's accelerating isn't it it's, ha yes. it's accelerating my life certainly over and over again seemingly miraculous happenings mm -hmm. magic happenings just go bam 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 yes. bam so as as amazing as that was it's it's one of several mm -hmm. but it it's high up there in the top 10. It was it was utterly ridiculous. So then we get we have dinner at the the giggly squid and um and I gave you my book. I remember that. Yes, I, I have that I have that here with me. Yeah. Uh so that was your birthday gift and we just hit it off like like as we say in England the house on fire, right? I mean it's just like so you tell me your story and I'm telling you my story and Dale's sitting there going, bloody hell, when's this all going to be over? <laughs> no, he's not. He's wonderful. I, 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 I loved him. He's, he's, he's great. And I finally said sort of, you know, what, what do you do, Dale? And he, and he very humbly said, well, I just, I just follow her around, you know, she's the one, but no, he's, he's equally a partner in this madness. Mm -hmm the one that got up knowing he had to go to Stratford how how does that happen you know mm, that's anyway, like a yeah it so happened. Anyway, now I need to tell you why it was that I was coming to Stratford at that time and uh dovetail into what this whole yes um, most definitely all right so for those of you that don't know my work um as as Melanie says, there's a part, there's a there's a Gaia TV show, and if you go to my website, which is very simple to remember, to be or not to be dot org, um, there's a red button there that says watch the Gaia show here, and you just click on that, and it will take you to. I I believe it's still available that you you have to sign up for a seven day free seven day, not free trial. It is a free trial if you then cancel you know you just sign up for it and then you could binge watch all seven episodes and then you can say well that was a load of rubbish forget that and then you can get your money back which um some people do i'm sure but most of them don't most of them like melody stays with it and watches it a couple of times uh it's it's the culmination of now going on 20 years work uh that i have been on this journey and I say work, I do not really mean work at all. 20 years play, it has, it has been an amazing thing. But so if you're not at all familiar, I need to explain, oh, a very as short a synopsis as possible yes. of what, <laughs> what that is. About. You know, you're laughing like, yeah, that would be, like, be like 45 minutes, won't it? Just giving us the intro. Probably. I can't promise anything. Um, no, I'll, I'll make it as short as I can, but... Uh, but if I don't explain to a certain degree the absolute basics of what this journey has been about in discovering the truth behind Shakespeare, then uh, you won't understand the huge announcement that I'm going to give at the end of, of that. So we've got a bit of background. We'll have a laugh. We'll have a, we'll have a chat. And, and, then, and then I will tell you that this something that is really truly one of the biggest announcements that I've ever made and so this is an exclusive for Melanie because uh, I haven't told anybody yet except my you know I've told my daughter and my uh, closest friends who are working on our team here but nobody knows what I'm going to be doing in Stratford so in order to get into that I should just tell you background I'm a musician all my life um was on was signed to various record labels etc it feels like another incarnation really so but that's just an, an aside to just get that out of the way it's hardly important to what i'm going to tell you about now which is my really my true purpose in in, in this incarnation i know it is 
well, how it came about was that after fifth, I was 55 years old and I had done everything I wanted to do and I'd had my little hit record and I I was musical director of a Davy Jones of the Monkees and had a flirtation with a little bit of fame, nothing major, thank goodness, because I would be dead if I'd become famous. I would have by now. But I had all that going on as a musician. But then my daughter's off and running. She's at NYU University. She's going to be an actress. All that's happening. I'm 55 and I am praying fervently to the divine to take me. I'm saying, please, I don't just take me. I'm, I'm done. I really don't particularly like it here. I'm losing tolerance for everyone around me. It's just like, oh, what am I doing here? But if you've got something for me, tell me. And that's how that was that was the way I prayed. Tell me. You've got to show me. Otherwise, you, you just might as well run me over with a truck tomorrow. Just make it painless. I want to go home. So that was what I was praying. Um wow. Should I go full fledged into the uh, yes. or, or no, how I was yeah, in? no 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 or they are. We're in, we're here for the weird and wonderful. I used to talk about. I used to say for, at that point. So I'm praying, and then shortly after that, my best friend at the time introduced me to. He said, "I'm doing a one man show in Beverly Hills. Will you come and support me?" And like you do for a friend, I said, "Of course, of course, I'll come." And yeah, what? When is it? And what's it about? And he said, "Oh, it's it's about the mystery of Shakespeare." And I went, "Oh, oh great." I wasn't the least bit interested in Shakespeare my whole life. It was a, it was actually, it was it was sealed off from me purposely so that I wouldn't have to unlearn all the rubbish about what you said. You know, oh, this is rubbish. I I will only deviate from what you said in a little in in in, in saying it's not that Shakespeare didn't exist. It's just that the the mystery of who he was mm. is that pinned on this guy from. I'm this guy from Stratford, and honestly, I I would say it it it's a purposeful mystery, and so I don't even think I don't even say anymore that it, that the man from Stratford is not even a real part of it. He's a real part of it. it it's all all a beautifully choreographed, brilliant subterfuge that ends up being what I I think of as a scripture. But the man who was Shakespeare himself was most probably let's just put it that way it was most probably somebody else mm -hmm. using a mask of the man from Stratford. Yes. so leave it at that so my friend says i'm doing a show on, on 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 about shakespeare and i was not i was not interested at all but i went because i went went to support him however there is an interim thing that i've now started talking about for the last two years um I didn't talk about it for a long, long time because I felt I had enough on my plate explaining that Shakespeare is not, not really maybe Shakespeare and the Virgin Queen was no virgin and the royal family that you've got right now is the wrong royal family. I mean, all this other stuff that I've that it leads to, but I, I just didn't want to add this element to it. But I feel it's really important to actually just touch on this now because it's all part and parcel of the whole thing. How what happened after I made that prayer was a couple of weeks later, I was in bed in my apartment in Los Angeles, which is actually this very room now, which is now my green screen studio room. So I was laying down, reading a book, and I felt the atmosphere shift dramatically and become very electric. And three beings floated into the room through the walls. I had a momentary, momentary fear, just a tiny bit. <gasps> what? Is, oh, what is this? I called though immediately on my my guru, person whose whose teachings I have followed for the past forty five years. That's Paramahansa Yogananda, and he was there instantly. I felt him immediately, just <gasps> there at the foot of my bed and filled me with non-FDA approved bliss. Um, it's not something that you can get injected with. It's just, but it was just, 
it was telling me, it's okay, you're safe, you're fine. I was utterly in bliss, but I couldn't move. I was paralyzed and I was flat like this and my body would not, would not respond. I couldn't move. So it went from that just tiny flash of one second of, ooh, what's this? And then, oh, I'm okay. I'm all right. So whatever this is, and the two beings on either side of me, I could not see them. I stress this. They, I was protected from seeing them because I was looking straight up and couldn't move. But I just could feel them, sense them right on either side of my head, and they started to uh, operate on my brain. Um, that's about all. I, that's the only way I can describe it. And it was just something was going on. They were simply put as psychically, spiritually operating. Felt like a drill going into my head. I'm not talking about a black and decker. It didn't put a hole in my head, but it was. It, this was psychic surgery. And so they're messing around in my brain. I don't know what they're doing, but it was actually quite pleasurable. And it was just sort of, okay, what's this? And I could hear them talking to each other. I could hear the, the uh, conversation that I could not understand because it just sounded like electric static. Um. So they're messing around in there for a while. There's a third. There's a third one that's over at the foot of the bed with Yogananda, um, and then they withdrew, and then just faded out the walls. And then I could move again, and I pronoun to Yogananda, and I thought, well, that was very strange. I I don't know what that was about. It happened twice more. Two weeks later, it happened again. This time, no fear at all, because it was just, oh, they're back. Oh, they're back. And the same thing was repeated. And I got an upgrade. Presumably, they'd screwed up the first one. They put in <laughs> 2. Point, put in 2.8, and they, and they left the forceps in or something. You know, like, oh, damn, i got to come again. Give him 3.2. You know, I, I don't know. I'm just making it up as I go along. But it was real, more real than this. Mm -hmm. And then they came in and they did it a third time. So whatever it was, I had no idea at the time, uh, but I understood later, obviously, that they were prepping me for this work that was to come, which was the Shakespeare work. And the and the way that that is understandable is that I was then a I was able to decode and understand cryptography that I've never been trained in. I could understand deep mathematics that I'd never been trained in. Um. So I was. I had this connection was reawakened, which for whatever reason had to be hidden from me during the early part of my life. So that was 20 years ago. In July, it will be 20 years that I've been doing this, and I haven't had a day off since. And it's been a great joy to be delving into what this mystery is about. So it's a long story, so I'm going to have to be short and give you very, very cliff notes on how the codes work so that you can understand what is coming. Please mm -hmm, stay yes. tuned. All right. So to do that, I'm going to share screen and um, give you... Oh, so you've disabled participant screen. You have to... Um, it says host has disabled participant screen sharing, so you have to allow me to screen share. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, this is serious. She's got the glasses on. Okay. It's under, it will be under the more, the three dots that say more. And it, there it says. Mm. Is that done it? Yep. Okay. Good you. Good to you. <laughs> Very techy. Just went straight for it, fixed it. Okay. So I'm going to run a keynote to here that is just going to, as I say, I'm going to try to make it a synopsis. Minimize that so that that's out of the way. So um, literally, this is just my, my, my graphics intro. <laughs> I love doing graphics, by the way. It's something that I never understood why I was learning it earlier on when I was with the monkeys and Davy Jones. But I did a couple of books on Dave, about Davy Jones's life. And 
by doing those books, I learned to do I learned to do graphics, and now it turns out that they're an absolutely critical part of this because without the good graphics, you can't really understand what's going on with the codes. They're very visual. So this is me, uh, pre long hair, pre beard, um, two thousand and eleven, uh, playing a concert inside Holy Trinity Church in Stratford, where Shakespeare is buried. And the, the gravestone is right behind the piano here. And that's what it says on the gravestone. It doesn't make any sense. It's really kind of just a silly rhyme thing that people say it's the worst epitaph for the greatest writer of all time. I'm not even going to read it. it. You don't really need to know what it says. It's just mumbo jumbo. This is his monument above my head. And it too is very cryptic it's obviously it's obviously in code the latin is bad latin it's wrong grammar for latin and the the way the whole thing is structured is again a giveaway it it doesn't make any sense and so it's clearly part of encoding i was able to understand that because of course i'd had <laughs> brain surgery so and here is the holy of holies altar stone which figures very exclusively in the whole story. Uh, it looks like this. But the codes that I'm going to show you in a moment sh tell you that the, the man who was Shakespeare hid something inside that altar stone in order to tell us why there is a mystery, why there is a cover-up, why there is a subterfuge. And the mystery is simply this, and this is not my findings, this is just historically accurate. What my friend told in the first five minutes of his show that I went to see and support him in uh, was nothing to do with codes. He was unaware of codes. He was just telling us that there is a mystery, and the mystery is this. Shakespeare, though known as the greatest writer in Western literature never wrote a letter to anyone and he lived in london and his wife supposedly is back in stratford and he should have been writing letters back home or riding back home and but, he, but of all the research into him no one's ever found a letter he never wrote a letter to anyone no one wrote a letter to him only one has been found but that letter was actually sent to him and never delivered and it was unopened. So there's a mystery, like how can the greatest writer in the world not communicate with anybody? Additionally, he had the 25 year career in London that was where he would have been a cross between Steven Spielberg, uh, JK Rowling and Tom Cruise all rolled into one as an actor, director, writer. No one ever saw him. No one saw him. No one said, oh, the other night I was at the Mermaid Tavern and I saw Bill there writing out a scene from Macbeth, having a pint. No, it never happened. There are no manuscripts. The original manuscripts of all 36 plays, plus others that we're sure he wrote as well, 154 sonnets, six epic poems. There are no manuscripts. They do not exist. The originals in his original hand do not exist. When plays were put on, a scribe would then take the manuscript and, and write out the individual parts for the players. They'd hand them out to the players. The players would rehearse the play. They'd learn their lines. They'd, and then they'd put those lines back together into a package and, and have them uh, printed up for distribution as sold as a play, right? The originals, where are the originals? In the hand of the author, they don't exist. There's not a play, not a poem, not a line, not a page, not a word in his own hand, in the original hand. This is a big mystery. How can that possibly be? Eleven of his plays are set in Italy, and he knows Italy like the back of his hand, and he knows the idiomatic language and the places. And yet, the man from Stratford never travelled anywhere. In fact, there's no record of him even having an education. And yet he's a brilliant scholar that knows all about the Greek classics and everything, botany, science, mathematics, oh, music, dance, the law. He's never wrong about anything in the plays. He's, he's the most educated person of the time. 
but he never was educated. There's no record of him being at any university, college, school, or even, you know, elementary school. So that's the mystery. Why is there, why, why is this this big gaping hole in the actual life of the man that we're told is Shakespeare? So that altar stone, once I get to the codes, you'll understand that I had to get to that altar stone because the codes tell you clearly he's left something in there to explain all that I just said to you about the background. That this, why, how can this possibly be that no one saw him? No, and there's no record anywhere. So there's a mystery. I'm told once I decode it that the altar stone holds the answer to that mystery. So I've got to get inside that altar stone, and it's a nine foot long, three foot wide, two foot deep piece of solid marble called the Holy of Holies altar stone. And in Catholic, it's a Catholic altar stone because the church was a Catholic church originally. And therefore, it must have a tiny little hole inside it somewhere that is called a reliquary, which is part of the Catholic uh, belief system that they put in there. Rome sends over um, relics of a saint. It's about the size of a small child's shoebox, slivers of bone, maybe a piece of the saint's clothing, um, maybe a piece of their writing. And it's put inside that altar stone in order to consecrate it and make it holy. And then they put five crosses in the surface of that altar stone to represent the stigmata wounds of Christ. And then that is considered then a consecrated altar stone at which can be said mass. So that's the Catholic belief that that's where the, the, the devotee comes and has union with Christ through taking communion. All right, so I put up a banner in front of that altar stone during the show that I was giving for, for the people in the church so that no one could see what was going on behind the banner. And then for the last number of the show, I asked for all the lights to be turned off so that we could record the very last song in, in, in by candlelight. But I'm getting ahead of myself. That's what I did. I did that. 12 or 13 years ago, and I secretly radar scanned the altar and nobody knew I had done it. So we had people behind that banner who were sworn to secrecy, who radar scanned it and, and someone who filmed it in night vision. The codes that led me to be able to understand that something is there start here on Mount Sinai, where Moses is given the name of God when he asks, who shall I say, send me? And the Lord in Exodus chapter three, verse 14 says, I am that I am. Translated as I am that I am, the name of God. The first time you see the name of God in the Bible, spoken by, by the Lord himself. And that in Hebrew looks like this and read right to left, of course, each of the first letters of each of those words is an Aleph. So it's Aleph, Aleph, Aleph. Aleph being the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. If you turn the alphabet backwards so that the last letter becomes the first, Tav becomes the first. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. And this was a common form of code back in, during the Renaissance, very simple, called an Atbash code that meant you just substitute the last letter becomes the first. And so Aleph, Aleph, Aleph becomes Tav, Tav, Tav. And Tav, Tav, Tav is the Greek equivalent of that is Tau, 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 three Ts. And that symbol then is called a triple Tau. And it is used by modern day Freemasons and before them Rosicrucians and before them the Knights Templars. And it's just a symbol to in indicate the code of, oh, this is really the name of God, but sort of backwards, instead of Aleph, 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 it's top, top, top. And it's a well-known symbol that seems to represent the three crosses on Calvary, though they were not Latinized crosses, they were just Tau crosses, much cheaper for the Romans to crucify people just like that, three letter Ts. And so this became 
a symbol where three T's were joined together like this, one there, one there, one there, which also looks like a TH. And this is a symbol called a triple tau. It's well known. You can find it all over the internet. And the TH part stands for three things that mean in Latin, keys to the treasure, place where the precious thing is concealed, and templum hieros, Solomon's temple. So that's the basic foundation of that's a very simple code that was used back in that day to say, oh, are you a member of the club? You know, like, oh, TH, TH, get it all hooked together. This is called a ligature when the T and the H are packed together like that. They are two letters, but they're really the three Ts, but they are also one whole symbol joined. So in the gravestone, can you see a triple tau? It's not even encoded. It's right straight down the middle. There's a T and a T and a T there, right under the name Jesus, forming a tau cross. And in fact, the, the Ts are separated by these two Ys as well, which I'll get to here. And a Y meant in those days, blessed be Ye men, so Y was a substitute for TH. That was a substitute for the letters TH. It meant, so T-H-E is the, and T-H-T is that, and that again. Blessed be the man that spares these stones, and cursed be he that moves my bones. It's all encoded. The TH itself, there are two THs here, but they are not THs. As you can see, they are ligatured together in the same way that this symbol is, which is a now a well-known symbol in modern day times. So what is that about? It, it seems to be saying in the gravestone itself, oh, we're using the secret name that the Rosicrucians used for the name of God. And it means key to the treasure and place where the precious thing is concealed. So it's telling you right off, there's something hidden, hidden here. It's a treasure. Come look. What about the monument itself? Does it have THs? Yes. It has 10 of them. But once you see them, you realize they're all the same. They're all this ligature hooked together, the T and the H making one symbol. Yeah. No way. And so they've got the whole thing is set up to look at like, oh, there's a group of six here. And there's a group of four there, but there's two other ligatures here. The word, the letters M E, M E, saying me. But those are never ligatured together. That's a special thing that's only on the monument. Me, you know. So what is this? Those those letters and symbols and ligatures stand out, and they're in a they're in a pattern of four and two and six, or read Hebraic fashion backwards six two four. Now, in Shakespeare's sonnets, there's a dedication that is in the shape of three inverted triangles of six lines and two lines and four lines, the same patterning, six, two, four. And there, all the words are separated by dots, two, dot, the, dot, only, dot, begetter, dot. What is this about? Well, as I studied the the leading cryptographer of the time, whose name was John D, and we'll get to him in just a moment. He invented a system that was using dots as part of the cryptography. So the intuition is that, oh, perhaps there's something hidden here. Uh, perhaps you're supposed to just count the sixth word and the second word and the fourth and the sixth and the second and the fourth and the sixth and the second. Now, this is the only part that is not my finding everything else that you'll see following on from this is my discoveries but this was this was already uh s sort of speculated by a scholar whose name was john rowlett and so i always want to honor him he was the one that came up with well maybe you're supposed to count the six dots and the second dot and the second and it turns out it gives this sentence these sonnets all by evia the fourth t ever the fourth t or evia well that's a very simple anagram of Veer, and one of the leading candidates to be Shakespeare 
uh, since 1920, for the last 100 years or so, has been this man, Edward de Vere. And we know that he often riffed on his name being an anagram of ever. And his name itself, Edward de Vere, is six letters, two letters, and four letters. And so maybe this is a clue to this whole six to four business and four to six business. What is four to six? Four to six just happens to be the date, April 26, on the baptism certificate of Shakespeare. And this says Guglielmus Filius Johannes. And it's not Shakespeare, it says Shakespeare. It was a common name in Warwickshire at the time, Shakespeare. So that's a one way of distinguishing the man from Stratford from the, the, the author who used Shakespeare, spelled differently and sometimes with a hyphen between Shake and Spear. And it's supposedly followed by three crosses, which are, the official story will tell you, oh, well, this is his family. His family is illiterate and they can't write their names. And so they just write a cross. But on the other hand, yeah, maybe it's just another way of saying these three crosses. Maybe it's a hint of the triple tau, you know? Maybe. Ever. Veer, the fourth T, the fourth T would possibly be the the fourth person to be crucified after after Christ on Calgary, and that fourth person was Saint Peter, so he was the fourth cross. And Saint Peter asked to be crucified upside down, saying he was not worthy of being crucified the same way as his Lord Jesus. And there he is being crucified in A.D. sixty nine. Now, the dedication to the sonnets is here. And if it's put into a grid like this, and this again, I would say this was uh, this was the shoulders of someone I was standing on. Uh, the, the, a, a person named Art Neuendorfer said, I suspect that you're supposed to put this whole thing into a grid like this, and you know when to wrap around the letters and wrap around. That if we're looking for the fourth T, maybe the fourth T is the fourth person to be crucified. And he was crucified upside down. So maybe we're looking for a inverted Tau cross. And indeed, in the sonnet's dedication, you find there's a triple Tau there. And right next to it, there is a inverted Tau cross that spells out De Vere. So Everything that he and John Rollett had talked about at that time was just, oh, maybe the fourth T is important. Maybe there's a code hidden here in the triple towers. From then on, everybody sort of, um, these two people and others who were looking at this 20 years ago said, well, it's not leading anywhere. Uh, we must be barking up the wrong tree. Uh, but I followed on with the work after that and then continued to say, well, I, no, I think they're right. There must be, if that's a system, perhaps it's also in the gravestone. So I put the gravestone into multiple grids and found that in a certain grid, 17 grid, there's a triple tau there and right next to it, another inverted tau cross that says Veers, the family name of Edward de Veers, the Veers, or just possessive veers his triple tau so if that's a system it must also be in the monument as well and indeed here's the triple tau in the monument verse when it's put into a 55 grid along with an inverted cross saying e veer so we've got a system there that's what started me on this there's a system with an inverted tau cross spelling different versions of veer de veer e veer mimicking the fact that St. Peter denied Christ three times. Remember the cock crows? He says, but when the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. The soul will just come to him and say, do you know this guy, Jesus? No, no, I never heard of him. You know, He denied him and felt, of course, terrible about it. So when they finally caught up with him and crucified him, he said, please don't even crucify me the right way up. I'm not worthy. So that's 
that's leading you to the idea that dies vir, vir means truth in Latin, and this person might be this John D who has done that because he's known to be the leading cryptographer of the age. He's Queen Elizabeth's spy in Europe. He is an astrologer. He's communing with angels. He's a very pious man who wants to find the truth about creation. John D. So when we look at this, this grid then, the actual gravestone that I had put into a 17 grid here, I found, oh, wait a minute, there's a lot going on here. Because he was known as the queen's ears and eyes as a spy. And here are two right angle, uh, triangle shaped uh, situations where you've got the words ears and eyes mirrored against each other. Here's Elizabeth in her favorite frock, covered in ears and eyes. She's really telling the world, don't mess with me. I've got my spies everywhere. I see everything. I hear everything. And of course, then you realize, oh, wait a minute. D's put his name in here vertically. D, D. Not only that, he's put O, O, D. O, O, D in the shape of a number seven because that was his code number. He was 007. I mean, come on. James Bond, that whole story, was was written because uh, of this, this story. We knew that John D was 007, and so it ends up being placed into this coded version of the gravestone. So, a lot going on here. What else you need to know is that hidden in wrong numbers is the clue to everything. And this is the book called The First Folio that has 36 of Shakespeare's plays in it. It's the most expensive textbook in the world. The last one that went on auction sold for $10 million at Christie's. One book. It has all 36 of Shakespeare's plays in it. And here, page 264, it says right at the top, no man must know, no man must know what follows, the numbers altered, no man must know. Okay, well, what follows is page 273, <laughs> the numbers have been altered. It really couldn't be any clearer once you see it and you realize, oh, come on, they're just telling us straightforward. The numbers are altered. Oh, no one must know. This is a secret. And then the, the, he carries on to say, M-O-A-I does sway my life. Oh, and what does it say further on down there? It says, M-O-A-I. Oh, it's part of a code. And it says later, if this fall into thy hand, revolve. Whole books have been written about this scene in Twelfth Night and why it why there's a code that is never solved in the play. But again, it's so simple that it, it has escaped people because it, it just says and puts it in italics, revolve, revolve it and be opposite. M-O-A-I, if you revolve it, becomes I-A-O-M. And I-A-O-M is the Freemasons' most secret password that is passed on to initiates one letter at a time. Now, I'm not a Freemason, otherwise I couldn't talk about it because they're sworn to secrecy. But it's pretty much all over the internet now that one, one grandmaster happened to spill the beans and wrote a long book about it and said, this is our secret code, I-A-O-M. And it not, it's not a word, it's a, it's a pranayama technique. It's a technique for raising the energy up the spine through the chakras to the third eye to bring about enlightenment. So here's Shakespeare in a joke scene in a comedy play, Twelfth Night, trying to solve a code and telling you how to solve it. He gives the code MOAI, but then says, oh, just revolve it. It's, and then the numbers are altered. Look for wrong numbers. They will clue you into what's going on with all this. So when he's, his name is Malvolio, he says, if this fall into thy hand, revolve. And you revolve. So let me take you now to... We're getting to the point where I can make this big announcement, but as I said, I, you, you, do, you need to understand what comes before it. So 
Let's just pause there for a moment to get Melanie's uh, reaction as as or to make some comments because we need a bit of a breather. It's a lot of stuff, isn't it? There are I, code. Yeah, there is. I I obviously because of I've watched you. I've watched the series, and I've got the book as well. You've got the book. I've got the book. <laughs> So I obviously have because you know the the book. I mean, the series is is amazing, but obviously the book itself is is way more deep than, yeah. than that. I mean, you know, even so. I mean, I I am I am not good at maths. I will I will say that now, and mm. I you know I I look at some of the things I have in here, and and it's still. It blows me away. Even in the on your series, it's something that is. I always say to people, look, you don't have to understand it initially. Just yeah. let it. You just let it go in into your your energy field. And I always find that it. What will happen then at some point in time when something else comes in into the fold? Immediately it drops in, and you have complete and utter knowing. And yeah. and I think that th this is the case. Not, not, not to worry to the fact of if you don't wholly understand it, but just just like be open to it because it does. It all drops in. Yeah. It really and does. I yeah, and I don't thrust the mathematics down people's throats. I do say in the book as well, you know, look, you don't have to understand this. I'll I'll, I'll show you. I'll do the do the work. Just just relax read through it and like you're saying melanie if it, if if you're stuck on the math just just let it roll by it see where it's taking you because gradually you do see that this is actually not arguable uh, that this is slam dunk and then i end up proving it is slam dunk anyway by radar scanning the altar which mm. proves that there's something there but yes um i love to try to show that and have to show it because uh of what it, what this is ultimately leading to now. So the next, even shorter bit now that I'm going to synopsize for us all is what happens when you take, you see, there's this pattern we've discovered, right? 624, what's that about? Well, Edward de Vere, turns out, died on 624, June 24. The history books say he died on that date. Okay, and all the codes are about 624. Well, that's kind of strange. Um, Shakespeare, the man who is born in Stratford, uh, he's baptized at the beginning of his life on 426, the mirror image. And didn't we just see him say in Twelfth Night, revolve. Revolve, M-O-A-I, gives you I-A-O-M. Revolve, 624, it gives you 426. Uh, the numbers are altered. It's all very, very clear. The angels that John D was talking with, and he had seances for about 10 years with uh, what in those days was called a scryer. Today we'd just say a medium, but the word for it back then was a scryer. Uh, John D himself was not clairvoyant. He could not see the uh, angel, the angelic beings. So he needed the services of a medium. And that medium, uh, was brought in and he could see them and so he would tell John D what he was seeing in in the crystal ball or in the obsidian mirror that they used and they would they would invoke the presence of angelic beings archangels Michael Gabriel Uriel and Raphael visited them now if you look up this there's a lot of other shenanigans going on at the time because the scryer turned out to be a bit of a shady character as well so it's all mixed in with all kinds of intrigue but just if you take the basics, they have a seance in 1584 on June 24th, 624, in which the angels say, I'm going to give you a huge download here, write it all down. So they, they tell John D how to structure a, a grid, which I'm going to show you, uh, and we're going to fill it with letters. Guess how many squares there are on in that grid? 624. Oh, and it's delivered on 624. And there's 624 squares. That's interesting. Maybe this is a code. And then what did I show you? The gravestone is encoded. The monument is encoded. The sonnet's dedication are encoded. 
How many characters are there in the gravestone and the monument and the sonnet's dedication? 624. It's pretty simple. Once you get that far, you go, oh, okay. So I'm going to show you what you do with those, those clues. I mean, there's 624 of these characters in there's the there's the sonnet's dedication, the monument, the gravestone. This is a grid of four quadrants into which I have poured all of these letters, including the punctuation, because that's John D's specific signature. He uses the dots and the commas and everything to place them into there. This is the Enochian tables that was channeled to him on June 24th, 6 to 4, by the angels. And they gave him one by one in letters six foot high and flaming <laughs> flames and say, oh, put an R, now put a Z, now put an I, now put a... And it went on for more than a whole day where he was told to put all these letters in here and there's crosses within them because he color-coded it as well. It's the most elegant and ridiculously deep channeling imaginable and 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 you know melanie you do some extraordinary stuff with automatic writing and getting messages through can you imagine sort of going through a session that lasts almost two days in in length where the angels are saying minutely telling you to put these into a grid it's going to give you something and you've got to trust and just say well, i guess so yeah I'll, I'll do that yes well but then john d has to come along and write the dedication to the sonnets and everything that's in the monument and everything that's in the gravestone, knowing that at some point, some guy will, you know, get his brain operated on with a black and decker who, who, who can decode this and realize, oh, there's 624 characters here. They must be to hover over these 624 characters here. And there must be a key that allows you to see what is being said here? Just like the inverted tau cross and the triple towers are telling you a certain part of the story, now it gets even more deep because literally, I won't get into knowing how I knew that the double T is the key, but here it is, TT at the end of the sonnet's dedication is supposed to mean Thomas Thorpe, the, the uh, publisher. But Thomas Thorpe, his name is really Thomas Thorpe, isn't it? TH in Thomas and TH in Thorpe. It's that symbol again, the TH, the name of God, the triple tower. Oh, okay. So wherever there's a double T, double T, double T, double T, double T, double T, those double T's are pointing across now to the Enochian tables and they are pinpointing letters oh, in the Enochian tables. And what do they say? The letters say living page. Okay. But now something that never happens in, in cryptography at all. The key, the double T, is in the opposite part, the, the, the plain text. This is ciphertext, this is plain text. There's double T's here that match precisely those other double T's, and they're gonna point back across to other letters in here. And they say, yo stigmata. Hmm. And then, of course, this guy in the play says, oh, if it falls into the hand, revolve. Yo stigmata. Yo is a word used back in medieval times that means look at, but not just look at, look really carefully at. It means really place your attention on stigmata. Well, those are the stigmata wounds, aren't they? Price wounds, the two in the feet, two in the hands, and the, and the spear in the side. Where did we find that before? Oh, well, that was in the Holy of Holies altar stone, isn't it? Which has five crosses carved into its surface that represent the five stigmata wounds of Christ. So it's saying living page, a page, a document, or maybe documents, has been kept, preserved, alive, living. Look carefully at the stigmata. That's pretty clear. Well, now, as impossible as that might be to think somebody could write out this whole thing, make double T's point to the letters in the Enochian tables that will give you this living page of stigmata, and then, oh, but let's be even more clever. Let's revolve. Let's turn the whole darn thing upside down. And now the double T's here are going to point to completely different letters in the Enochian tables to give us a third message. Oh, come on. 
Is this, is this what? Possible? It says, I have hewn. And hewn is a word that we hardly ever use today, but it's, it's very clear. It means cut into stone. It's a living document, been kept alive, preserved. Look carefully at the stigmata wounds, which are where? Oh, they're in this, they're in the Holy of Holies altar stone. The Catholic altar stone. Where I have cut into stone. Oh, where I have cut into stone, what? Now the double T's here are pointing to completely different letters here. And they say, desiderata, which is Latin for what I want you to know. What I want you to know. So the codes say, couldn't be any clearer. It's a Shakespearean rhyming couplet after all. Living page, yo stigmata, I have hewn desiderata. Shakespeare writes in iambic pentameter, you've heard, but he also writes sometimes in tetrameter, four beats. Living page, yo stigmata, I have hewn desiderata. It's in sets of fours. And it rhymes. And it's in Shakespearean form. And it's a code telling you that there's something inside where? The Holy of Holies altar stone. So you see now why I had to go and do this subterfuge of putting on a concert in the church so that I could have access to the altar, which is normally protected by two things, a forensic system that sprays you with a chemical if you get too near, and 24-hour CCTV cameras, but because I'm doing a concert there and put the grand piano right up against it, they can't spray their guest artist. And then at the end, I say, let's turn all the lights off in the church, and I'll sing this last song by candlelight so as to defeat the CCTV cameras. And now I can have a team go back behind there and radar scan that altar. We didn't hurt anything. We didn't harm anything. We didn't take anything. We just put a protective cover on the on the surface of the altar stone and radar scanned it. We had three minutes to do it while I was singing the song that I had written in a musical that I've written about Shakespeare called and it's, it's Sonnet 18, Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day? I sing that. At the end, he scanned the altar. We removed the banner. Nobody's any, any the wiser. I told him six years later that I'd done it. And this, this is how we get to the current story. Now, Living page, Yosimana, I am Fium Desiderata, with a period at the end. Now it gets to be even more ludicrously, I mean, if you can make a message out of all these letters that have been pointed to by the double T's, and then I then go and scan it, and I will show you the results of the scan now, but I'm going to do this first, this bit first. Those same letters can be rearranged to make a second message. Gag my vigil. And almost completely the word apostatize. But there's an N left at the top of that half couplet. And an N looks exactly like an Aleph in Hebrew. And if this was the only place this happens, you could say, Alan, you're mad. This, this is nuts but it happens over and over again that he likes to substitute hebrew letters for roman letters and he likes to turn things through angles of 90 degrees or completely revolve them through 180 degrees this is his methodology john d's methodology so i know when i see that n if you turn that aleph the first hebrew letter remember how the code started in the first place the first turns into the last the first Hebrew letter turned through 90 degrees becomes the last letter of the Roman alphabet, a Z. And now you've got gag my visual apostatize. And in the other half, you've got the I have hewn part. Oh, yeah, I'd forgotten I've put this in. This is a stamp issued by the Vatican in, in 2016 to honor the 400th anniversary of Shakespeare's death, who died in 1616. The Vatican put out a stamp. Why would the Vatican put out a stamp about Shakespeare if it wasn't honoring the fact that he's a Catholic? Well, now the story gets really beautifully deep because in those days we were Catholic and then Henry VIII wanted to marry Anne Boleyn and the Pope wouldn't let him. So he said, screw it, we're not Catholic anymore. Now we are um, Protestants. And now we have turned our back on on the faith of the Catholic Church. So then they're Protestants for a few years, and then 
he dies and eventually Mary gets, comes to the throne and she says, no, no, we're back to being Catholic again. And then Mary dies and Elizabeth comes to the throne and she says, no, 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 we're back to being Protestant. For 25 years, England did not know what to do with their beads. So they were burning people at the stake for being Catholic and then they were burning people at the stake for being Protestant. Terrific race, the English. Uh, I mean, it's just, come on. It's all madness, isn't it? But that's what was going on. And Shakespeare, the man from Stratford, was a known recusant Catholic. That means you're a Catholic in a time when it's very dangerous to be a Catholic. But to your way of thinking, this is your, this is your faith. And if you deny your faith, that is called apostatize. You deny your faith to say, oh, I'm, I'm Protestant, but you still keep practicing mass because you really are a Catholic. You could be, first of all, they would fine you a massive amount of money for not showing up at church, not praying the way you're supposed to pray in a Protestant church, and then, and then they tor torture you, and then they execute you. A vigil is what a Catholic has at the end of their life, isn't it? The wake, the vigil, where the family gathers to pray and wail over the body of the deceased for 24 hours. But he says, gag my vigil, silence my vigil. I cannot have a vigil. Why? I must apostatize. I must deny my faith. And it's known that Shakespeare, the Shakespeare man from Stratford, was a recusant Catholic and owned a property in which was a well-known Catholic hideout, so that when the, the powers that be of James's reign and Elizabeth's reign came on down to try to find those who were still practicing mass in cellars and in basement floors, etc., uh, they would come and round them up. Shakespeare owned a place that hid recusant Catholics. And his father was known to be a recusant Catholic. And his daughter, Susanna, was known to be a recusant Catholic. So at the end of his life, he's saying, gag my vigil. I can't have a vigil because if I have a vigil, that's public. And the, and, and the people will know I was, a Catholic. I was a Catholic. And they will attack then my daughters. And they would torture them. So he's in a real quandary. He's, <laughs> you see? This is half of the codes that are being said here in a way that is makes it so perfectly clear that, you, that he's following the same system. First letter turns into the last letter, the same way the code started, Aleph and Tav. First, but now first Hebrew letter becomes the last Roman letter, Z. What's rest left here? Heaven, word, idea, prize. An idea is a plan. I've got a plan. I'm going to send it heavenward. Highs is a word that's not used much these days, but it means hurries, urgent. Urgently heavenward, I'm sending this idea, which is a prayer. You know, he's saying, I, but there's one letter left, the T. Well, the T, remember, was the last Hebrew letter, the Tau, the Tav. And it be, has to become the Aleph or the A. So if he's going to do the same thing as he did with that other construction that I just showed you, he's going to take the T and turn it, become the first Roman letter. The last Roman letter, sorry, becomes the first letter, A. And now it makes sense. Gag my vigil, apostatize a heavenward idea, highs, and you've got a period at the end of it. Living page, yo stigmata, I affium desiderata. Gag my vigil, apostatize a heavenward idea, highs. In other words, at the end of his life, he has no choice because to understand to a Catholic who has been supposedly writing these plays that are very heavenly, some of them are heavily Protestant, some of them are heavily Catholic, but it doesn't matter. He wrote some that are very, very heavily Protestant and he's living the life of a Protestant, pretending that he's obeying the new laws of being a Protestant. But when he dies, at the end of his life, he's going to face this terrible decision. If I die having denied my faith, I will spend eternity in hell. How can I possibly get out of this without without having a vigil? If I have a vigil, and so 
at my death, I am literally letting the world and letting God know I am still <laughs> to them the true faith, what they felt was the true faith. I'm still Catholic. His daughters would be tortured. And yet, if he doesn't do something about it, uh, he's he's spending life in eternal life in hell. So this, these codes turn out to be very, very specific. They are literally a prayer. He's saying, I have to hide, I have to deny my faith. I cannot have a Catholic vigil, but I am sending this prayer heavenward, a plan for how I can let the world know my true faith so that I will not spend eternity in hell. And I am doing it how? By putting a living page document that is being preserved look under the stigmata wounds which are in the holy of holies altar stone where i have cut into stone what i want you to know it's as it's as clear as that and that takes us to the fact that that is the the alpha omega and the omega alpha reversed everything is about reversal everything is to say revolve it it's a construction that is utterly or really almost impossible to imagine that how this came about but if you go to my website i'm going to stop sharing again now and just now move into the third part of this once melanie has, has uh, said whatever she might want to say about this because literally i i just find it mind-blowing to, yeah. to to con consider that that somebody has the capability and the foresight to to be able to put all of those codes together is is for me when i when i first watched it is just wow but we get we can get over that by one thing which is that i i had to get the proof didn't i if if i had not scanned the radar we scanned the altar with radar i would not have the world's first scientific proof. The world has no no proof of what Shakespeare is, and we have nothing. We have no manuscripts. We have no letters. We have no anything. He's not left anything. It's the, it's all been erased, seemingly. Well, it hasn't. It's been hidden yeah. somewhere. Yes, that's another shoe to drop. Yeah, but but at least by radar scanning it, I've got the proof. So if you go to my website, I'm not, I wanted to keep this a, somewhat short, but if you go to the website, to be or not to be .org, um, there's a, there's a video. Actually, I can show you, I show you a little bit of it, a tiny bit of it that shows you the results. So the results speak for themselves that they prove the codes were authentic. The codes were real because I risked, I risked uh, arrest and imprisonment doing what I did. I went to Stratford. I, I, I did a concert for them and under their noses, I scanned their, their altar because I knew that the answer was there. And I knew I would have to get physical proof. Otherwise, no one would ever believe me. And they just say, well, you're a nutcase, like many others who have tried to solve this mystery for 400 years. And I certainly fit the mold of a nutcase. So, I mean, I, I, I didn't want to uh, really deprive them of that uh, nice... <laughs> No nomenclature. Oh, Alan, you just a nutcase. Fine, but I've got proof, and now it so it becomes different. Mm. Um, so let me show you the proof, and then I will then smoothly dovetail into what I'm doing in Stratford. So this will be the last share. I'm going to take you. A video that I made hmm, 12 years ago. All consecrated altar stones have to have a saint's cap with a hewn into them that holds relics of a saint. Remember I told you that? It's got to have a tiny little hole there about the size of a child's shoebox and it contains relics of a saint that Rome sent over 800 years ago to put inside that consecrated altar stone. Now, somewhere in the middle, 400 years ago, John Dee gets a hold of it and decides he's going to, uh, what does he say? I have hewn, he's going to cut into stone what I want you to know to prove 
what was going on with this entire mystery of Shakespeare and the cover up and there being no manuscripts or no documentation. A little blue area is what you'd expect to see in the scan. The two labs worked independently of one another using separate protocols. To I say two labs. I radar scanned it and I sent the results to two separate labs so that it was a double blind study. Would they both find the same thing? And mm -hmm. indeed, they did, but they didn't know each was doing that same thing. And in fact, I can remember vividly when they called me and they said, Alan, you sent us this. You said you, I didn't say I'd scanned an altar stone. I said, I've scanned a big, big rock and I'd like you to analyze what I found there. I suspect there should be a small hole there. And they said, well, forget small hole. This is huge. We don't even know how this rock is still uh, managing to stay intact. It's almost hollow. And I went, yes. <laughs> oh, of course, because that's what I suspected. And the codes now had proven it. Accuracy. And they both came up with the same result. This is a life size rep cavity, six built. and a half foot long. Seven inches deep, 12 to 30 inches wide. It's 250 times the size it's supposed to be. You don't cut a hole this big, <laughs> this big into solid marble unless you're going to put something this big into it. Different software programs revealed differing densities within the huge cavity, indicating the possibility of many layers of contents. The missing manuscripts, new, undiscovered masterpieces. Who knows? Who'd like to know? So on my website, there's a voting mechanism where it says to be or not to be opened. And you can vote to say... If you get a chance you know, to rewrite history. I'm asking you to go to this website and vote yes. I want to know what Shakespeare left for us. Or no, I'm not interested. Let's leave it another 400 years. So hopefully we're not going to leave it another 400 years. We're going to do something about it now. So I've been on this almost 20 years now. And in that time, I have found... I, I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on and on. It is so deep. I've found proof that Shakespeare actually did translate the King James Bible. I found proof that he's telling us with geometry hidden on the cover of the sonnets. He's telling us the geographic coordinates of the Great Pyramid of Giza, which is why I've been there now five times measuring it and, and working deeply with the mathematics of the, of the pyramid. Why? I mean, why would, he be why would he be telling us about mathematical constants hidden in the Great Pyramid? Why would he be telling us about his actual reason for the cover-up and, and saying it's hidden inside that altar stone. This is news that will shake the world of literature, of religion, of history, of the royal family, because there's a lineage hidden within this, which I, I'm not going to go into now, because I don't want your minds to explode before I tell you the part of, of that's now going to happen. I have been on this journey so long that it, it's it's very clear. Everything builds upon another and another and another and another, and it goes wider and wider. And it's about extra dimensional beings, right? Because John D was talking to what he called angels, but that was maybe the only word they had for them back then. It was angels, and I got the the ability to decode this by contact with extra dimensional beings who might have been angels, I don't know, I didn't see them, who might have been spider-like, I don't know what they were like. Maybe I was being protected from, well, I don't know. But I know that it's real and that I had help, just as John Dee had help back then with literally the angels giving him 624 characters on the date 624 and telling him to put 624 into the monument and 426 into the monument and let's make sure Shaxbury and Stratford is baptized on 426 and let's make sure Edward de Vere dies on 624 and right once you see it just it's just this beautiful thing coming together 
it's really a game. It's a puzzle. Hamlet in the play says that undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns. He's supposedly anguishing over killing himself to be or not to be. Should I commit suicide? Should I stay in this earth, this horrible earth that I'm stuck in? Or should I free myself and not know what comes next, what dreams may come? And he says that dilemma puzzles the will. Revolve. Will's the puzzle. He's saying will is the puzzle. The identity of this playwright is the puzzle. Will's the puzzle. It's a puzzle. It's a mystery. It's a conundrum wrapped in an enigma. De Vere, the name De Vere, is the Hebrew word for the Holy of Holies. And it is pronounced De Vere. It's a Hebrew word for the Holy of Holies, altar stone. And it, its name is De Vere. And it comes from the root word De Valim, which means word, the first word, it means the sacred word, it means the first. We go from unity to duality, we've got a creation, wow, bang, duality, what happens? Vibration. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, word, om, and light, let there be light. And let's have a creation. That moment of creation is the fear. It, it, and the veer part of the word means truth in Latin. So this man incarnates as de veer, which is the name, the thousands-year-old name of the Holy of Holies, altar stone itself, where he's going to hide the truth of who he really is. And he's using a mask, of this man from Shaxburg, who really is a mask covering up the truth hidden within. It's not that the man from Stratford stole the identity, of the real author, which most people who write about this mystery tend to say, oh, you know, he just, he claimed it for himself and he's, and he wasn't the real writer. Oh, it's rubbish. This is a perfectly choreographed, beautiful symbiotic relationship in which the person who is the mask is just as much an important part of the person who is the truth hiding behind that mask. Veer, de veer, holy of holies, hiding behind a mask. We are all this mask. We are all Shakespeare. We're all wearing that mask. And we are all looking for removing that mask and finding the truth where inside us, hiding inside. It's the same that all great scriptures say the kingdom of God is within you. It's not a right and a wrong and a yes and a no, and this is a good guy and this is a bad guy. It's a, it's a puzzle. Will's the puzzle. And you are supposed to find it. And I've made it like a treasure hunt for you. You know, it says the treasure is within here. It's beautiful. It's, mm. it's just, and and he's combining it with, with mathematics. Why? Because he's saying, you know me as this great poet, this dramatist. That's the right side of the brain, isn't it? The creative aspect. The other side is the left side of the brain, which is all precision and science and mm, right? math. But they have to be balanced, don't they? Mm. You don't have one without the other. Mm. The rose that's a rose that is a rose of rose of rose. Uh, we're looking at it at this level, and it's beautiful, just as nature is, just as the sky, or a human being, or the ocean, or a sunset, or whatever. It's all made out of what? Deep, 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 deep down. It's nothing but math. <laughs> it's nothing but electrons. The only difference between one electron and one one element and another is hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium, magnesium. They're just different numbers of electrons. The same thing made to look like something else by the mathematics of putting this all together and making it spin at incomprehensible rates at an incomprehensibly tiny, 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 tiny level to form this entire illusion of a world that is entertaining and beautiful and horrible, yes. It's heaven and hell, it's everything, it's war, it's everything you can imagine. 
And he put all that, everything that you can imagine into the plays. The deepest love and the worst betrayal and cannibalism and you know, just everything imaginable, right? The plays contain life on earth. The plays, the histories, the tragedy. And then in the sonnets, he puts his divine work and encodes how to solve it all. He's telling us how to solve the mystery of life. And he tells us, you are it. In Sonnet 121, he says, I am that I am, and they that level at my abuses reckon up their own. He actually uses the name of God, and he uses it in the first person. And King James had issued an edict that says you can't do that. You cannot use the name of God. In 1605, he put out this edict that says you don't use it in any Mayday parade or a poem or a play or anywhere. You can't say the name Jesus. You can't say Holy Trinity. You can't say God. You can't say, I am that I am. And he literally puts out the sonnets and says, no, nope, I am that I am. Get used to it. Because so are you. You're wearing a mask. Look behind that mask and find Devere, the Holy of Holies, inside you. And Devere truth inside you just like every great scripture has always told us and where do we find it he's put it inside the tavir inside the holy of holies of the stone in stratford in that church and i am going there i finally realized after all these years of working at it that it's not going to solve itself I published it. I published what I've just shown you. I've got the proof is there. All you need to do is open that altar stone and the world will change. The world we know about the story about who Shakespeare was. It becomes that moment in Wizard of Oz that goes from black and white to technical. And oh my God, there's a real life associated with it and a real person that we know about his, his own his love affair with the queen and the child that they had that should have been the next king it gets it gets way 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 deep <laughs> i'm not going to go there now but i'm telling you i just had i just suddenly had the intuition about three months ago you know what this isn't going to solve itself you have to finish it you have to go there you have to tell them that you scan their altar and that's what i was doing the day that you and i bumped into each other i had just arrived that very hour and I went to the church that next day and said, you may not know me, but uh, I'm the guy that scanned your altar 13 years ago. And I'm here to tell you that there's something wonderful in there for you. Because when you open that altar stone, which you must, because when enough people vote to open it, you know, and that's, let's say, 1.2 billion Catholics might vote to open it because technically that old stone is in a state of desecration and you can't be praying at it you must reconsecrate it again and to reconsecrate means you've got to open it you take out the offending materials and reconsecrate it and he's telling you in the very codes he's saying i'm telling you i am a recusant catholic and i had to deny my faith apostatize but i have this plan i don't want to die and go to hell for eternity i must tell the world and the lord my true belief so i'm going to hide it where inside a catholic holy of holies altar stone that is named <laughs> to be so all it takes is to simply open it and the analogy that i like to use is if we knew, like Da Vinci, right? We, 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 we have 19 paintings by Da Vinci. If we find another painting, it would be just another one. Well, we did find another painting called Salvatore Mundi, and it went on, it went on auction four years ago, and it was bought for how much? $415 yeah. million dollars in one painting. Should we have said, you know, oh, we know where Da Vinci died, and there's a there's a blank wall here in his apartment. I wonder if there's anything behind there. If we, if we scanned his apartment and said, oh, I wonder if there's anything else behind there. Should we look? Nah, let's not bother. It's probably moldy by the, you know, or 
Beethoven's, you find a chest in the cellar where Beethoven passed, and, and you say, oh, I wonder if his Beethoven's 10th is in there. Should we look? Nah, let's not bother. You've got the same situation here, except we already have nine symphonies of Beethoven, and we already have 19 paintings of Da Vinci. We don't have anything of Shakespeare, and we've got a situation where the codes are proven scientifically. There's something there. Shall we have a look? So I went to the church when you and I met and I said, this is what I want to do. I want to help you raise money to give to the church in exchange for them opening that altar stone in full view of the world's media. And they actually were not resistant to it. And they said, yeah, we wouldn't be resistant to it. We're a church. We're not We're not political. We don't care if it proves that our man was the guy or was someone else. What I did not tell him is what I'm going to do two weeks from now. So I am going to Stratford and I am going to pray Shakespeare's last prayer that's in the codes here. Living page, Yostig Mata, I have human visitor writer. What I want you to know is inside the altar stone where I cut a hole to show you what this whole thing is about. I was a recusant Catholic and I could have to hide my identity, and that's why there's the whole mystery surrounding who I was and what 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 I was. But please open that altar stone. That's the only way you will free my eternally damned soul for denying my faith. If you love Shakespeare as much as you protest, you do. Do you not want to answer his last prayer? His last prayer. And I am going to that church and I am going to sit in front of that altar and pray eight hours a day for three months. And I am inviting the whole world to come and join me as that story gains traction and they start to ask what's this weirdo doing here sitting in a church for eight hours every day nobody does that well i am you gonna throw me out of a church for praying i don't think so what are you praying about no oh, i'm just praying shakespeare's last wish what's that oh let me show you the code oh is that real yeah let me show you the scan does that mean that there's something there? Yes, it means there's something there. What does that mean for the church? It means once you open it, it's yours. And you can slap it up on a wall. You can build a little museum next to your church and put it on a wall and have the whole world flock to see it tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Macbeth. You can charge whatever you want for the world to see it. It will be like... King Tut's tomb, it will go on tour, it will go all over the world, and you will have no more monetary worries ever. And the story will change a little bit from it. He's the guy, he's the only guy to, oh, he was this important part in this entire puzzle, and he gave us this. But there is no doubt, this is his last prayer. This is his last word. And if no one else is going to do it, I realized when I had this intuition three months ago no one else is going to do it this is it's your job you have to do it you scanned it go up there tell them you scanned it there it is maybe they haven't read my book yet maybe they have but they're not going to take action until until some action is called for so i'm going to educate them and i'm going to give free presentations to anybody who wants to come and see i'm going to give free lectures on what these codes are about and i'm I'm going to sit there and pray and invite people to pray. And I believe people will join me online and pray. And I think they will come physically and pray as well. And once we've logged whatever, I might log 400 hours of prayer. But a million people might join and log 400 million hours of prayer. And the power of prayer is going to open that altar stone and bring the truth to light which is what Shakespeare is telling us. He wants us to do. He wants us to know the truth. And whether it turns out it is the man from Stratford, or it is Edward de Vere, or it is some combination of Francis Bacon and de Vere and John Dee and Shakespeare himself, or whatever it is, I don't care. I just want the truth. Because I know it's going to be beautiful. 
that's now I've told the world through your podcast that's what I'm going to do another shoe will drop on April 23rd the official birthday of Shakespeare uh, when I will be revealing a song that I've written called A Prayer for Will and I'll be making that available and and uh, all proceeds from that are going to go to uh, well I can say this but it's not it's not public yet to a foundation and I've, I've formed the Shakespeare Foundation for the Arts but it's not ready to be launched yet the, the website is not quite ready it will be ready on his birthday on April 23rd and that's when I'll launch the whole thing and say now please if you want to change history you want to be part of this solving the mystery please donate to the Shakespeare Foundation give whatever you can if you can't give money give your prayers give us your time give us your effort give us your story give us you know write about it. spread the word because there's nothing as powerful as an idea whose time has come and this idea that has been sent to heaven by shakespeare himself is an idea whose time has come because what is in that altar stone is far deeper than we can even imagine it's it's something sacred I hope you'll join me. Wow. Thank you for that exclusive. And uh, that is going to be absolutely amazing. You are, like you said, once you, once you sit in there and you literally are in there praying day after day after day, you, you are going to create quite a stir which is is obviously what is going to be needed like you say to get all of these people together to sit up and notice um about all of this information uh, and about what it's what it's going to lead to and and like you rightly say it's i'm sure without a shadow of a doubt this is this will be worldwide it will be everywhere and once it's everywhere, as you well know, then people have to sit up and take notice and something then, some action then has to be taken. Hence why you're doing what you're doing. Once you're walking your path. Yeah. And it's not that hard. I've been doing Kriya Yoga for 45 years. We often have eight hour meditations. You know, it's a, it's, it's well, sure. It's a bit of a marathon a day kind of thing, but um, well, I can do it. And and uh, imagine though the power of that, mm, power yes, of that, that combined forces because people will, they will join. I know they, yeah. It's a field of dreams, isn't it? If you build it, they will come. You say, of course they're going to come. They're going to meditate for an hour. They're going to pray for half an hour. They're going to add their fifteen minutes or their two hours or their eight hours, whatever. But I intend to stay there until that altar is open in full view of the world's media mm. it has to be done like that doesn't it you they can't like you say it can't be hidden anymore it has to be it has it's to be done like that it is that's what he actually said <laughs> and and it's not it's beyond argument it's proven by the scan and it's proven by the codes and they're very clear that's what he did and he wants, he wants to be free of that apostasy that he was forced to commit to save his, his daughter from torture and for praying the wrong faith, you know, at a time when it was life-threatening. He could be burned at the stake for it. Mm. Mm. But I know then the world will see an entirely new version of Shakespeare realize whoa what a what a divine piece of work they constructed in these codes with the help of angels this is not just a couple of guys having a lark and saying let's put a puzzle together this was sacredly this is a sacred divine work because it is a another it is a form of scripture that was unrecognized we just recognize it as great art it's great drama and the sonnets are great and blah 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 you know but oh 
it, it it's so so much more and if i might finish with what i end the, the gaia series with i put it simply as this i say after all of that of seeing the, the the construction of this that is gothic in its capability of building this like a cathedral and every every view you look at it from it's there's perfection um, there are wrong numbers all over the first folio. That book that sold for $10 million has 67 wrong page numbers in it. And every single one of them is a code. And the, and the funny thing is, they say, oh, that book would be worth a lot more if it wasn't such a, <laughs> if it wasn't such a bungled print job. They made all these mistakes in the page numbers. I'm telling you now, get, get a first folio now while they're cheap with $10 million. Because once they find out that they're all a code, mm. they'll be rolling in it. I'm, it's just advice, you know, of course. No, no, first, no first folios go on sale. They just uh, periodically, one goes on auction and it fetches that amount of money. But that's my little joke about it. It's all there. It's, it is just beyond imagining what a mind these, these beings were. The person who was Shakespeare, whichever he was, was a divine being, totally enlightened, totally in divine consciousness to be able to pull this off and measure it all together and attract the help of the angels and bring this into because, because it's, it's going to it's going to surprise us. There are other things there that are to do with everything else that's happening in in, in our world right now disclosure you know mm -hmm. we are not we are not alone in, on this little spitball of a planet in this, in, in this universe there's there's stuff proving that there's going to be other things that i know are in the altar that the codes say and there's things that i don't know are in the altar that the codes just hint at but um so at the very end i say in the guy show i say look what he's really telling us is what is he saying? What's the most well-known line in all of literature? To be or not to be. What is he saying? And it boils down to this. He's saying we all have the choice to be or not to be who we truly are. And we can continue wearing this mask behind which the truth is hiding in our communal Midsummer Night's Dream. And you can play every role you want. This is a character in Midsummer Night's Dream who does that. His name is Bottom, and he wants to play every role. I want to play this one. I want to play that role. I want to play that role. That's us. Mm, yes. I want to incarnate over and over and over again. I want to yeah. be this. I want to, be that. I want to be a Nobel Prize winner. I want to be a rock star. I want to be the president of the United States. I want to be, right? I want to be the greatest lover the world has ever known. I want to be the greatest villain. <laughs> Sure. Mm. Wrote about it all, he says, in all the plays. There it is. You can do that if you want. Or once you get it and you realize, I am the whole thing. I am the divine. So are you. You. We all are. There is only one consciousness. We are all divine we've just chosen to play these lesser roles and forget who we truly are but he's that's what he's saying to be or not to be you can be what you truly are but once you know it yeah maybe then you choose to stop wearing the mask and now be honest about who you are own it and then do your bit in this mad crazy world <laughs> to remind brothers and sisters of who they are that we're all one and, and that's what the Bodhisattva vow is isn't it? Dalai Lama comes back again and again and again and again and again I will keep coming back Yogananda says I will come back if need be a trillion times so long as one stray brother or sister is waiting in delusion eh? to think you, you, you've made it home you can just be an eternal bliss because the rest of me is still outside there. Home. He's only coming back home enlightened to bring the rest of you back. Mm. That's, that's the whole trick. That's it. 
And that's what he's telling us to be or not. It is achingly beautiful. It is intoxicating beyond belief. <laughs> just go into bliss just thinking about it because it's just... Who could do such a thing for the divine being? Mm. And, and he's, he's, he's more or less imploring us, please tell my story. Open up that altar so I can blow your mind <laughs> with what this has all been about. Mm, wow. I think uh, although you're not you're not saying it and I'm sure that you have thought it oh go deep, there deep down <laughs> 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 uh, many many times it's a distraction you, you've That's just really you've just said like briefly with disclosure and where we truly are associated with, who we're truly associated with, that, and the connection, like you said, with the pyramids and everything else, that it, it's it's taking us, or it will take us, the collective consciousness to to the next level. Then I think that literally, that's what everything is all about. This is, mm -hmm. you know, the, the codes that you've been working on for for nearly 20 years, even fr the, from then taking it to, to the pyramids, even what Robert is doing as well. All of this now seems to be coming about. You can see, you can plainly see where where this is this is heading. You know, mm -hmm. it's a it's a huge wake up call to 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 take us to to the next level where where we need to where we need to go and for those for those out there that again once this happens is to is to like you just say is to to look at it from both aspects you know then then it's proven it, it's there it can't be denied anymore mm -hmm. can it that that's the thing and we're all doing our bit. We're all we've all got a little piece of the mm. entire tapestry, right? What you're doing, what you should say, Robert's doing, what what uh, well, every light worker in yes. every every phase of this awakening, it's 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 escalating. It's just accelerating. People are having meetings like you and I has, I'm sure, all the time. Oh, what the hell, you? Where did that come from, right? Um, because, well frankly because we need to we, we are on the cusp of 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 self-destruction and i do not believe that will happen but i do believe we're protected from that but nevertheless we've got to take action we've got to do something we've got to get busy knowing that we it is our obligation to help bring the light in uh in whatever way we can and it doesn't mean you have to be doing some massive huge uh uh well anything you know in a project that you, tiny little deeds of kindness all over the world change hearts don't they mm, yes very yeah very much be so good parent be a good good worker be a good student be a, just do your best you the best you you can be whatever that is and you add to the collective advancement of our there's only one. Well, again, one might my, my one one of my favorite sayings in all of Shakespeare's works. It's so clever because it's put into the mouth of a drunkard in Twelfth Night named Sir Toby Belch. It's a great name, right? Belch. He's drinking throughout the whole play and he's burping throughout the whole play. And he's, he's funny as hell, right? And his name's Sir Toby Belch. And he'll have his lines, he would say his lines in a certain scene which are pertinent to this scene. And then out apropos of nothing, as he's leaving, he'll go, oh, well, and burp. It's all one and leave. And this happens four times. He says it twice, and then the clown echoes it back to him twice. You know, powerful truth is always put into the, into the mouth 
lots of clowns or or uh, seemingly minor characters. Uh, but I love that he puts it into the in, into the mouth of this character who's just funny as can be. And yeah. And he just says that. He just says, it's all one. Which is about as cool a way of summing it up as, as you, as, right? It's the truth. Yes. It's all one. Mm. Yeah. Get used to it. Exactly. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I think with, with everything now that that is is happening within the world you you see the followings that that people have got and the interest in it now you know in the things that Gaia is putting out even to to the people you see on social media it is it's huge it's it's just it's like a massive snowball now whereas you would have looked you know, 10, 10 years ago, it is nothing compared to today. And and yeah. so, yeah, and so many people are waking up, are asking questions, have got some form of awareness. And it's like us, you know, this, I'm sure what happened to us has happened to many people out there. And it it just, you just stop. And you just, you literally just think there's, there's something, I mean, I know, and you know, there is something bigger at work here. And it just, it, it is when it happens to you, it is just mind blowing to think that we can, we're just like little pieces that somebody of a greater scale is just literally putting us all together for a purpose we're all parts of the jigsaw puzzle coming together and sometimes we don't even know what that is i i i trust the process now i did it what you know i i've surrendered long ago it, you know it is what it is we, we don't necessarily in the beginning know but we oh, don't have no. to know do we because eventually no, the bigger picture opens up and and then we you you yeah. know you it could be six months. It could be years down the line that what has ever happened, you you sit there and go, ah. Oh. <laughs> I, I never would have volunteered for this if I'd known it was going to be 20 years. Mm. No, I wouldn't. You know, I'd have gone, well, okay, God, but, you know, I, can I do six months? You know what I mean? <laughs> what? If, he, if it had said, you know, yeah. I'm your father, Luke. And I... <laughs> This is gonna. This is gonna be a long haul. You know, twenty yes. years. You'll still be doing the same thing, and probably another twenty after that. So, are you ready? I'd have gone. No way. Just take exactly. me tomorrow. Yeah. Knock me over with the truck. I'll take that one. Thanks. No, but I, you just go. Oh, oh I've got to do this. This is great. And I honestly thought it would be about a year at the time. I thought, oh, I'll... my my initial reaction was I would write it as a musical, which is what I did. I set about writing it as a musical the next day after I saw mm. that. That's what I do. Yeah, so do it. But once I'd got the musical written, and then once I'd got a part of a novel written, and and then I realised, wait a minute, I'm finding real codes. These are real. This isn't part of this a, a dramatic story. And then I was on the real path. And then I, you know, mm. then, then you sunk. You know, you mm. can't. No, exactly. And I mean, but that, but isn't that fantastic? <laughs> Yeah, because, because that it it's just perfect. Because you like you just said, if you knew that that was what that was going to be twenty, you, no, you would have like immediately said oh. said no. And when people say say to me about you know like having foresight and uh, obviously telepathy and know it knowing lots of things really do we it wouldn't work a lot of the time it's it's all right having some of that but it would be one it would be boring and and two like you say we would probably wouldn't get where we're supposed to go because we would already have said no I'm not doing it <laughs> if it was all laid out in front of you where what you passed was you would have said you can forget that <laughs> Because that's the joy of it. The joy of it is in the discovery. Exactly. It, 
and then when you realize what you're really doing is just remembering who you really are anyway and what your power is truly and what an enormous big huge bloody cosmic drama this all is mm. that is exhilarating and, and and every time you find another little piece of the puzzle you go oh thank you oh that's beautiful I right now I'm the only person in the planet that knows this but I can't wait to share it <laughs> oh you got to see this right and of course it that's it, it, it the the I think that's why we have a creation because if we, when we if we just stay in unity consciousness and we know it all after a few gazillion yugas, you go, ah, let's have a creation, eh? Let's forget that we know. Because that'll be fun. Mm, yes. Right? Of course. Mm. As it's downside, it has its tricky side. Let me try explaining that to uh, people in, in, the, in the delusion of hell right now in a war wherever they are starving and all that that side of it is is the incomprehensible side that causes people to leave their faith completely and say no i don't believe this is terrible this is horrible and and of course you cannot explain you can't rationalize and say yogananda had that dilemma once where it's well known that a mother had come to him to say her her son died in a motorcycle accident and she was bereft. And he wrote her a letter and he said, don't read this now. You won't. It's not time. You won't understand it. You won't be ready to, to even hear it. It may take years, but when, if spirit moves you to eventually read it, read it. Because I, what can I what can I tell you? Your son's in a great place. Mm. No, you need to grieve. You need to go through the pain. And there's something as hard as it is to say or even accept. There's something perfect in that, and you just don't know until you're at the other side of it. And, and it was just that. And now you've got an utterly eternity. Uh, of of bliss ahead of it's it's very hard is it? that is mm. very yeah I I understand, I understand that it's it's like like you say and you you know because I know obviously your story of the fact of you experiencing bliss for days on end and you know I've also experienced that in in going home and unless somebody has actually had the experience of that you it is indescribable so you could you can't explain that to to somebody who hasn't experienced it unfortunately words words don't prevail do they because of it is the experience it's like a lot of things within this it's 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 the experience it's all about the experience and it, it's not at the fact of of somebody telling you that isn't that doesn't work that isn't good enough you know it is fully to to know to have gnosis full knowing full experience of it and that's what i say to people you know they're like you you will experience it and once you experience it that's it Well, we've been going two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go to so many places, but we we're gonna. I will get together and we'll we'll carry this on from this. Um, yeah, let's for, get together. Traffic. Yeah, for for everybody listening to this, obviously, this will not be the last of the pair of us <laughs> getting together. You will have definite live footage from Stratford because I'm going to be with Alan <laughs> at some point. Because, like I said, he's not he's not that far away, so we're going to be supporting him wholeheartedly. And uh, we will be getting together on, I'm sure, quite a lot of occasions. 
and we'll and pray with me further yes 100 percent. yeah 100 looking forward to it yeah i am looking forward immensely and, and we uh, with this video we'll be putting the call out to all of those people to participate and to either turn up if they can in person, if not, obviously, um, to do it however you're going to do it. Because we know everything is quantum. So wherever you are, you are going to assist Alan in obviously helping to uh, open this. And I, I truly believe that this is going to be uh, going to be unveiled because I think it, it just for me, it just seems that absolute time. It really does. Um and yeah, so again, so watch still, watch this space. Yeah, watch this will. space, and uh, we'll we'll will be assisting him. We'll be massive on social media and everything that we can do to to help push this forward. So, uh, and I I say thank you to you, Alan. And it really is. I said this to Dale after we um we went our ways after our dinner. When you meet people, certain people that you know that you've more than likely met somewhere before in another life, that it is like, I we'd known each you forever. And it was just, again, just, just one of those things. And you have that experience every, every now and again. And everything that was put into place that played out that day we're we're waiting. There's a there's more of an unfoldment to come, and I I'm so excited about it. Too, yeah. Well, give my best to Dale. I wish I, I could will. have seen you today, and I look forward to actually uh, get us getting together at the at the the squiggly wig. What is it? The wiggly squid. <laughs> yes. Wiggly squid. Yes. Wiggly squid. So. Yeah, we you should do that again. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so, as we draw this to a close, like I say, this isn't going to be the last. And I thank you so much, Alan, for all of that. I find it absolutely fascinating, as I have done from the word go from watching your series on Gaia. Thank so, you. for those that haven't watched it, please, I would say, please go and watch it. It is fascinating. And it will only help you to understand everything that Alan is trying to achieve here with, with this video and obviously um, what he's looking to do to open that that altar stone. It will all put it into more of a perspective because it is, it's, like I said, it's fascinating. So on, 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 uh, on to be or not to be.org. That's yes. the main central hub to go to okay and then obviously you've also got your book which even that takes it into again even more of a, a depth i will put every well, link um to all of that to the series to your book to the website will all go down below in the in the description um to those of you who haven't so subscribed already please do so to give follow what we're we're going to be doing um, also, so to get it to many more people, especially with what it, Alan is is trying to attempt and to achieve, uh, please share it. Please give it a thumbs up and a like because that just gets it out there to more and more people. The other thing that I will ask you to do is the notification bell. Please press for all notifications because if you don't, Unfortunately, a lot of videos just end up disappearing into the multiverse, even though you're subscribed to that channel. So press for all notifications and we will see you again shortly. And I'm, I'm sure that you've enjoyed this. I enjoy all of my talks and I, I just do this for me, like I say to all the other people. It's just me, really. And whoever watches it, watches it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's my passion and, and I love it and I hope that you do and that you get something from it as well and that even if it just starts to waken you a little bit believe me once that starts it will just continue okay everybody and thank you again Alan and uh, we will see everybody again soon thank you everybody take care